What's up again, everybody? It's the best of my recollection. I'm your host and storyteller, Mike O'Reilly. Tonight's story is about Scott Quiring. Scott is a friend of mine. He's a frame builder, Michigan Mountain Bike Hall of Famer, and he's a real hell of a guy. I first got to know Scott around 91, I believe. I was at one mountain bike race where I happened to see this kid crossing the finish line in first place by quite a margin. And I was like, wait a minute, what's going on here? Once Scott showed up, it was out of control. I mean, this kid just destroyed people. I couldn't fucking believe the power that this guy had on a bike. And he wasn't necessarily the best bike handler. That's what was crazy too. He did not come from a BMX background or anything. Mad stamina and endurance. We're the same height. Uh, our seat height is the same. All our measurements on the bike are the exact same. But if you look at him, his legs are like way bigger than mine. And for most endurance athletes, they're skinny top to bottom. So once Scott got on the slingshot team, he and I traveled around and did some races together and stuff. I got to know him. He was into like punk rock music and stuff. And, and he was kind of quiet, but the really fast juniors, me and Scott and Brant Hendler, we were just racing against the senior men. One crazy story I have about Scott is the time we went down to Tennessee with the Slingshot guys, neither one of us had time to pre-ride the course. Scott was really not the best downhiller when he was a junior. So in this race, he was doing pretty good. I think he was in the top five and I was a few places behind him. And we come around, I think it was for the second lap, and this one downhill was so gnarly and it's really dusty and I see him at the bottom of it, you know, on the side of the trail, his bike is all busted up and everything. And I, I yell, you know, ask if he's all right. And he's like, yeah, man, just keep going. I finish the race, I end up doing okay. And I see Scott and he's like bandaged up. He had like a really bad cut on his hand. If he'd already been to the medical tent or whatever, and we're getting ready to leave. And I noticed there was like a spot of blood on the other side of his jersey, like not on the side that he was cut up. Dude, what is that like blood right there? And he pulls it up and there was a hole right in his side right here. And it was like where his hip bone just kind of punched through the skin. And that needed stitches for sure, you know. I was laughing about it. And we had a couple wild trips like that. When I think of him and Floyd Landis, they're similar in a lot of ways. You know, they both come from this kind of rural area, kind of conservative, like religious upbringings. Scott at least had access to, you know, television and music and stuff like that. I think he didn't get really good grades in school, but he knew he was a smart guy. And so I think there's a conflict there, you know, maybe at home and he really just, he took it out on his bicycle. He would just go out there and, and do miles on the road. And same with Floyd Landis. One of the big differences between Floyd and Scott is Floyd used dope to win the Tour de France and Scott never did any dope for any bike races. Both of these guys are my friends. Floyd, I don't judge him about the fact that he was a doper and doping did find its way eventually into the highest levels of mountain bike racing. After he stopped racing for Slingshot as a junior, he uh, had a contract with Bianchi, did a bunch of World Cup races. I think he went to Europe, he went all over the place. But I don't think Scott's main intention was ever to really travel the world as a pro bike racer because it's a rough lifestyle. I think Scott really just wanted to focus on building frames and that's what he did from actually a pretty young age. He was a welder for Slingshot. They were out of Grand Rapids and then uh, he started building his own bikes. And this is one of them right here. Even though his bike is steel, it's actually as light or lighter than some aluminum bikes. And the ride is not as stiff as aluminum or carbon. He's worked with all different kinds of materials, scandium, aluminum, titanium. That's it, Scott Quiring, one of my heroes.